What's going on guys, it's Professor Gnome, and today we're going to be looking at Raging Bolt EX and comboing that together with its new great partner, uh, Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX, because of its Teal Dance ability. What it does is that once per turn you can attach a basic Grass Energy from your hand to this Pokemon, and if you do, then you draw an extra card. Well, we can use its attack, where you probably never really will unless there's very specific niches where it kind of comes up. Because what we're looking to really do is that we're going to use Raging Bolt EX's Billowing Thunder attack, which does 70 damage times every energy that we're able to discard, and we can discard from anywhere on our field. So what you're looking to do is set up multiple Ogre Pond, be able to use their ability, the Teal Dance, in order to not only draw cards, but also set up Grass Energies. So that way you can discard all the energies that you need off the, the Ogre Ponds with your Raging Bolt or Bellowing Thunder attack and get rid of them that way and just do insane amounts of damage it's kind of infinite we also run the corner mask uh the cornerstone mask ogre pawn ex and really what you run this for is that one it's just a great wall if you ever need one and then also it gets past Mimikyu and other options so it's pretty good to just kind of tech into the the field you're already playing enough energies to be able to utilize it we also play a Sandy Shocks just to be able to get through certain matchups where like it hits for weakness. Also is a very quick way to get past Mimikyu and things like that as well. We run Squawkabilly in order to just get our hands where we need them to be. Mew because it's really good and also functions as a free retreater. We need energies in the discard and also draw support. So Radiant Greninja is also useful. So that's always good. We run the Bug Catcher set. Really what this is for is that it digs into our hand, gets us all the grass energies we need, or the Ogre Ponds if we're looking for them. And then outside of that, pretty much we're just running Vitalities in order to power up and reuse all those energies. Get them, you know, from our discard pile back into the deck, or not into the deck, onto our Raging Bolts, and keep those powered up. And then we're also looking to use Energy Retrieval, and I actually run a copy of Superior Energy Retrieval, in the late game in order to get back our grass energy since we're going to be discarding a whole bunch of them and we want to be able to utilize those as good as possible we also run bravery charm in order to just make our raging bolts a little bit harder to ko not that they're impossible to ko but it just makes it a little bit easier in the sense of because we're at that 240 number what can end up happening is one of our raging bolts on the bench can get attacked let's say by dracopult and then that 60 damage makes it so it's able to be one shot later if it's pulled up so we can run the bravery charms to kind of fix those damage numbers for ourselves a little bit easier as well as other things if we have to so that's going to be the list guys definitely let me know what you think of the list definitely let me know any changes or alterations you would make to it or how you guys are running it and also be sure to like comment subscribe all that kind of stuff be sure to let me know any other decks or any other cards that you want to see featured on the channel and I will make sure to add them into the schedule. And lastly, for the little announcements and things like that, be sure to join the community Discord down in the comment section below, as well as all my deck lists are also down there. So if you're looking for the deck lists or whatever, they're down there, and feel free to link up. Join the community Discord. And also, our first community tournament is being run on June 1st at 6.30 EST. So be sure to join up in that, and yeah, we would love to have you. So I will see you guys all in game one. Peace out. All right, we're going to first. This is game one. And we'll see what we can get ourselves into. We open Raging Bolt. We open a Ultra Ball. We will probably have to discard the Vitalities, unfortunately, because we're going to Ultra Ball for a Squawk Billy. But it's not the biggest deal in the world. We are up against Dracopold EX. That matchup's actually not that bad for us. Sucks that we're going to have to discard the Prime Catcher. Definitely don't want that, but it just is what it is. All this is going to go away with the Squawk Billy anyway. So unfortunately, it's just the reality of our situation. We can go ahead and play Squawk here. We will attach the Electric Energy, and then we will Squawk. Ooh, not ideal. So, we will Earthen Vessel here again. We will grab two more energies and pass. Definitely not what we wanted to see, but it's fine. 
We were we were hoping to get into some ogre ponds, get like a little bit more of an aggressive, you know, run going, but it's not too big of a deal. We do see the Rotom, so hopefully we're able to boss that up in a little bit. They are playing the Natu slash Zatu build, which I actually prefer. I think it's a lot better. They go into the Toxigiri. This should be able to get them into probably an Arvin is what they're hoping for. They got into Lance. That's not too bad. Not ideal, but not too bad. It can get them some Dreepies and things like that. So, definitely would have preferred the Arvin, but the Dreepy is not a bad pull. Especially since they can, they're still going to be able to instant charge anyway. So, not, not bad for them. The boss's orders is kind of nice, though what we're going to end up doing is we'll manually attach the energy here. And we're going to go ahead and Iono. Our hand is not very good, so getting a new one is kind of nice, plus resetting their hand when we know they have pieces that they'd want. Uh, unfortunately, we are, again, not really getting pieces that we want. So we're going to go ahead and we'll get rid of the Spirit Energy Retrieval. We'll grab ourselves an Ogre Pawn. We can place that down. We can start drawing with Teal Dance. We do get a Vitality, so that's going to be good for next turn. What we will do is... Hmm. Do we want to discard and draw six? No. Well, Bellowing Thunder for now. Not because I actually think it's the better play to make, but right now we don't know what their hand looks like. And they may need the Toxigiri to get themselves a supporter to bail them out. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. Remove that as an option for right now. And go from there. Since we're not at threat of getting KO'd. Even if they like did a crazy rare candy play or something like that. So we kind of have time to work with. So we may as well use it. We do have the vitality for next turn as well. So we can accelerate energy. We do have pieces, so we're not in that bad of a position anyway, even if they do, like, Rare Candy, Dracopult, attack into us. Since we have Vitality and an Energy, we do have enough damage. We'll be able to KO the Dracopult if they put it in the active, which seems to be what's about to happen. Since they already grabbed the Rare Candy and they grabbed the Rescue Board. So everything's kind of going our way right now. Oh, they just went regular Dreepy. I assumed that they had the Zatu. Like they were going to go Zatu, attach, fire energy. But I guess not. They're just going to put Dreepy in the active. Which is still fine for us because the outcome's the same. We can also just knock out the Dreepy. Unless we draw into a boss, then we'll pull up the Drake of Bolt. Provided we can get into like one more Ogre Bond. Because we need a couple more pieces if we're going to be able to knock out the the Drake of Bolt without a Vitality. Then we can always pull up the Rotom as well. Especially if they, they don't use their, their V-Star power. Pulling up the Rotom and knocking it out a little early isn't a bad idea because it would remove them ha having the option of utilizing their seal stone. So we'll see what we're able to get here. We do have enough pieces to get ourselves into something. We'll teal dance early. Kind of draw ourselves one extra card. There is another raging bolt that we don't really need that for right now. Honestly, what we can do is just get rid of that. Get ourselves two more energies. We can Teal Dance. So now we have everything that if we boss, we'll be in a good spot. We can go ahead and Poke Gear. We do find ourselves the boss. The question is, do we want to get rid of the Dracopult or 
do we want to get rid of the Rotom? I think what we want to do is get rid of the Rotom. Because like I said, getting rid of that V-Star power, getting rid of the Seal Stone is going to be pretty good for us overall. So there's really no reason not to. We'll go ahead and throw the Fighting Energy down since we're going to discard it anyway. We only need to hit for 200. So we just got to get rid of three energies so we can go one, two, and three. Right? 140. Yep. This should be 210. Yep. So we get the knockout there. We take two more prize cards. We get rid of the seal stone. And then since we... Oh, cool. So we got a Ogre Pond and another Grass Energy. So that's pretty sweet for us. We have the Vitality already on board. So... Again, we can knock out the Dracopult EX at any time without really too many issues. Which is, this is part of why this matchup is actually so good. The Raging Bolt matchup into Dracopult is really, really nice for us since we're always able to KO Dracopult, but they're not able to KO us. It always takes, you know, two attacks unless they already are like preemptively placing damage counters down. But then we have the Bravery Charm in order to offset that damage. So. We are in a really good spot. I also, like I said, I run the switch cart, which is nice just as a switch option, but also, again, heals us a little bit, offsetting those damage counters, making it a little bit awkward for them to get KOs. And we're just such a fast-paced deck, and Drake Pole isn't. Like, it just takes too long to set up. Not in general. Like, it's not that it's a slow deck, but in comparison to us, it's just a little bit slower, and we have all those other advantages that it just works out super well in our favor. So this is another situation where we can draw a couple cards for ourselves, maybe hit a boss, and we'll see what ends up happening. If we hit a boss, then, like, fantastic. If we don't, you know, no big deal. We can always Vitality, knock out the Dreepy and the Active, and just keep kind of pushing from there. They don't put any damage on us there's really nothing they can do so i assume they're going to concede but they may try to play it all the way out i'm surprised they didn't put the natu into the active since it already had the rescue board it would give them like the free retreat option but yeah they kind of kind of seemed like they were just going to concede anyway so that's going to be game one, guys. Definitely let me know what you think of the list. Uh, my play was okay. Definitely made a, a couple things that maybe could have been different. I think knocking out the Toxigiri was still the right play. I think bossing up the Rotom was still the right play. And so, yeah. Definitely let me know what you guys think of the list. I think Raging Bolt with Ogre Pond is crazy strong right now. Is it? I don't think it's the best deck in the game. Just because of how... I don't, I don't know. I don't. I just. I don't feel like it's the best deck in the game. I don't really have a reason, other than that. I just don't feel like it's the best deck in the game. But it's incredibly strong. So it's like hard to. It, it's hard to place it. It's winning like all over the place. But yeah, that's gonna be game one, guys. Definitely let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in game two in a moment. Peace. All right, we're into the next game. We're going to be going first. We open, Raging Bolt and some. <laughs> I was going to say Raging Bolt and some balls, but <laughs> I'm a child. Uh, we'll go ahead. We can nest ball here. We'll grab ourselves an Ogre Pond and things like that. Get ourselves set up a little bit. There's a Radiant Greninja, so it doesn't really tell us what we're up against. We can go Squawk and Ogre Pond. So we'll grab... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 Okay, we don't have... Okay, this is bad because we don't have Squawk Billy available to us. So, we actually have to Concealed cards here for two rather than one. We get one more energy. This is, uh, this is not good. I think we have to Ultra Ball... How pad and the Ultra Ball away. Go Mew. Our bench is going to look so awkward this game. We go Mew. Electric Energy. Restart for two more. 
Man, our bench is about to look so weird. We do have the fighting energy at least for next turn. There's the Comfey. Ugh. Not loving what I'm seeing. At least on the upside. The the good thing that we'll see here is that Lost Zone will take a little bit of time to kind of set itself up. Which is kind of ideal for us right now because it allows us to gain one extra turn where we'll be able to do Burst Roar and redraw ourselves a new hand. And that'll be kind of nice. It looks like we're up against Gudra. Okay. That's not bad. That's a little annoying. Hmm. How are we going to get... How, what are we going to do here? There's at least one Jet Energy. They did already use their Ace spec of choice. If we top deck into a Grass Energy, that'd be okay. An Earthen Vessel. A... Okay. That that works, that works. So... Let's Earthen Vessel first. We'll get rid of the Ogre Pond. We'll grab... Grass and an Electric Energy. Is that all what we already equipped? No. Yeah. So, what we can do here is we can Ogre Pond. So we can Teal Dance, right? We'll get one extra card this way. Another boss's order is not really what we wanted to see. But what we can do is we can Concealed Cards here. Get rid of the Electric Energy. Get ourselves two more cards. Still nothing that we wanted to see, which is a little bit unfortunate. We can retreat. We can go this. We'll drop the boss's orders. Pull in the Gudra. And then, though it's unfortunate that, that we're going to have to get rid of these cards, because I would like to be able to hold on to them, the reality is that we just kind of can't afford it. So we're going to go Burst Roar. Okay, still not super optimal, but it's okay. Our hand, our our draws in our hands have not been super great here. We will be able to knock out the Gudra on the next turn, though. Since at bare minimum, we can Prime Catcher to it and deal with it that way. So we're in an okay spot. Thankfully, it's... I mean, this is one of the drawbacks of Lost Zone. Is like even tur like after rotation, Lost Zone got a little bit slower. So they're probably gonna get rid of the Bravery Charm here, which is fine by us. Not the biggest deal in the world. That's cool. I like the old fashioned switch. It's kind of fun. This is the this is the one I use on uh, like IRL. Just think it's a fun old fashioned card. I also like the old fashioned card design. Like there's something about like having like the, the bolts like holding stuff in. It just has that like older metallic look. I kinda wish they kept this art style, but maybe that's just like nostalgia speaking. They go gen energy. They will hit us for two hundred. They take 80 less damage, so it's going to actually be a little bit annoying to KO them. But it will be possible. The question is, how much are we going to have to do? Because Rolling Thunder, so 170 plus 80. Okay, so not that big a deal. What we can actually do here is we'll give up one... Poke gear, grab ourselves fighting and an electric energy. We can ogre pawn. 
what would be super ideal here is that we can draw ourselves into like one more ogre oh, i just don't i don't need the grass energy right now cool concealed cards get rid of the electric energy okay that's huge that's actually like almost exactly what, like what we were looking for so we can ogre pond here again Get ourselves a grass energy. The bug catcher set is okay. Not something we like super need, but it's nice to have the energy prepared. Then what we can do is vitality. We can go electric energy and we'll do grass because it doesn't really matter. Get ourselves three more cards. And then, so how, what are we hitting now? What are they at? What is what is the number we need to hit again? I think we need one more energy. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. What we can do is we can throw the grass energy down. So we'll throw the fighting energy down. And now I know we hit for enough, so it's fine. So we can actually just go ahead and discard everything off the active here. So what is this? This two to eighty. And then we'll get rid of the grass. And that one. I think... Yeah. I couldn't remember, because I know it takes 80 less damage, so... I was like, I could For some reason, my math was horrible there, and I was, like, not counting correctly. So there's the iron hands if they they can retreat into it so they're gonna have to find a mirror or a mirage gate rather this this should not be called mirage gate it should be like something mirror looks like a hand mirror we'll see what they choose to do they shuffle the gudras back into the deck it is annoying to knock out gudras so understandable What we can actually do is if we get, uh, wait, right, we won't have the option to boss. Because we had to, we had to throw them away early. Yeah, they're gonna go cram here. Knock us out. Not that big a deal, though, because, again, we can go Raging Bolt. It's gonna be much easier to knock out the cram. Take one prize, uh, take one more prize. And that also, because it's only going to take us two energy to get rid of this, it's actually not that bad. What we might want to do, I think we want to just knock out the Gudra now, right? Yeah. So we'll pull up the Gudra, because I don't really care about the Iron Hands. Like, we can knock that out later, like, at any time. So we can go Mew, then we'll go Ogre Pond. I'll just teal dance onto it. We have... Yeah. We have the right energies that we need in the discard. We can go ahead and attach that. We can Ogre Pond one more time. We'll Nest Ball here. To get ourselves one more Raging Bolt. Then what we should be able to do is get ourselves into a Vitality. Yep. So then we can Vitality here. And we can go Fighting and Electric. Then we can manually retreat into our stronger Raging Bolt. Then from here... I don't think we want to concealed cards at this point. So we can just go ahead and attack. So 140. 210. And we will get rid of the... Oh, we have a fighting energy in hand, right? Yeah. 
so we will do 280. Really annoying that we're off by 10 damage, so it like costs us a whole other energy, but not the biggest deal in the world. Cool, there's the squawk all the way at the end of the game. We do have all the energies that we need, though. At this point, we just take two knockouts on anything. If they bring in the Iron Hands to like boss something up for some quick prizes, we're able to knock out whatever we want. Or we can bring in Raging Bolt and get the knockout there, so that's totally fine for us. We have Poke Gear, and we know that there is one more Vitality in our deck. We only have seven cards, so we're guaranteed to hit it. So we should be good here, pretty much no matter what happens. And even if they do a play where like they bring in Cram, attack into us, we knock that out, and then they bring in Iron Hands for like the extra prizes, we're still in a position to be totally fine. So there's the Counter Catcher. They bring in Radiant Greninja. They switch. They go Iron Hands. So this is kind of what we predicted. The Roxanne here is definitely a little bit more annoying. But we got the Vitality, so we're pretty much good to go. So not only do we have the Vitality, but we also have the option to draw with Mew as well. If we get into any of our energy retrieval style cards, we're good. Plus, we only need to hit for 330, so we don't even need that many energy in order to kind of close the game out. Like, Vitality alone will be pretty much enough. But it was a good play, though, to get the extra prizes and go for the Roxanne. Roxanne, a solid play. But we will go ahead. Uh, we'll actually lead Mew. Since what we can actually do here... Ooh. We'll... Earth and Vessel here. Get rid of the switch cart. Grab ourselves... Two grass energy. We can teal dance. And this kind of just confirms the game. We can go ahead and teal dance again. Cool. We really don't need that at this point. We can go ahead and vitality. Put fighting energy and an electric energy. Mew offers up a free retreat. You can place the energy manually. Which is another great reason why we run Mew. Since it just, like I said, it offers that free retreat at all times. It's pretty nice to get into. We could have got ourselves a couple extra cards there had we needed it. Let's say we didn't draw into the Earthen Vessel there. What we could have done is switch card it, used Mew to draw ourselves a couple extra cards to guarantee that we get into that vitality. So yeah, that's going to be game number two. And I will see you guys in game number three in a moment. Peace. All right, we're into the third game. Our opponent's going to be going first. We do get an all right start here. We'll hold on to the Sandy Shocks until we know if it's a deck that might be running Mimikyu. It is not, so that works out for us. Though it's funny, it's two decks that kind of do, like, quote-unquote, infinite damage. Since it's all about just stacking energies on you know both boards so that's actually kind of fun that works out for us well we do have bug catcher set and an ultra ball so we can guarantee ourselves into at least one raging bolt which is nice we could potentially knock out the beldum right away though we don't really need to though getting one beldum down is kind of nice so we will go ahead and Teal Dance. We do get ourselves into a Raging Bolt. Kind of nice. We can Ultra Ball real quickly to get ourselves the Ogre Pond. Place that down. Place it down, thank you. Then we can Teal Dance with that one. We get the Superior Energy Retrieval, though that doesn't really matter for us right now. We get the Bug Catcher set for a third Ogre Pond, so that's set up pretty well. We can go Squawk Billy here. And that does find us some pieces, 
that are kind of nice. What we'll be able to do here is go Greninja with the Nest Ball. We can utilize Greninja to discard the Fighting Energy. What that'll allow us to do is activate Vitality. So we can Teal Dance again with the Grass Energy in our hand onto our Teal. We get another grass or another electric energy, which is nice for us. We can attach the fighting, draw three more. We are drawing a lot of things that we don't really want, but that's not too big of a deal. We can go ahead and retreat. Bring our Raging Bolt into the active. And we can attack by removing one of the grass energies and getting the Beldum out of play. Not that that makes a dramatic difference, but I want to be able to just kind of eliminate as many Beldums from play as possible right out of the gate. Stop them from being able to get as many Matangs as they could possibly want. We also have this, this uh, energy retrieval, so that way we can pick up the grass energies and get those back into play. And there's an Ultra Ball. They get rid of an Iono. So I have to assume that they have like a researcher or some sort of supporter in hand and to be willing to get rid of the Pokegear and the Iono. Yep. So they draw themselves a new seven. There's a concealed card for two more. There's another Ultra Ball. So they're going to have double Matang here. They get rid of a research. So with double Matang, they're gonna they're probably gonna be able to get into us and Metal Burst. But we'll see. It just depends on their, their flips here. Another Ultra Ball. So looking at them the deck, they can set themselves up another Dialga. They can go Middle Maker here. We'll see how many hits they get. They still need one on Digger Ninja at least in order to retreat. Unless they also hit their switch. So there's three. And we'll see what they hit next. So you go four, two. Okay. It'd be huge if we can get into like a boss's orders. We unfortunately didn't hit anything off the Pokegear, which is a little bit upsetting. We will Teal Mask here. Because if we can get into a boss, it would be super, super big for us. We can go one more Teal Dance. We did get the boss that's pretty big. Like I said, we can go Energy Retrieval here, grab ourselves two more Grass Energy. That way we have something to discard, but we can also Teal Dance again. Because we're just looking to get as many energies on board as possible. We can use Radiant Greninja as well, like I said. In order to discard, we'll get rid of the Electric Energy. Draw ourselves two more. And then what we'll be able to do is Boss's Orders the Dialga V and take this out with relative ease so we will Bellowing Thunder we go here so this is all the grass energy that we'll be discarding which sets us up for 280 right on the number Knocks that out. Takes out a huge threat as well, because they only have two cards in hand. So, okay. The the Prime Catcher is also pretty big for us. So, unless they already have another Dialga V-Star in hand, we're in a good position. The Iono here is going to be, like, slightly rough, but not that big of a deal. So, it comes down to how many Metal, uh, metal Makers they hit. They didn't hit any on the one, so that's huge for us. We'll see how many they hit off the next one. They'd have to hit three energy. 
they only get one. So we're guaranteed that we're not going to get Star Chronos here, which is pretty much all that we need to have happen. They can super out all the energies back in. Obviously, I know it hurts us slightly, but not, like, dramatically. There's an energy, so they're at four. I don't think that's enough to KO the Raging Bolt, but I don't remember how much this does, and I don't feel like counting. Oh, they didn't even get into their V-Star. Yeah, so being able to get that boss was huge. That kind of just sealed the entire game, if I'm honest. We'll go ahead and bug catcher set first, see what we're able to find. We do get the extra energy. We have the earthen vessel available to us as well. So that's all good. We'll TO dance once. Bop. We get another earthen vessel, so that's pretty huge for us. We can go ahead and heal dance one more time since we will be able to get ourselves into more energy anyway. Cool, got ourselves into a fighting energy. And we don't need that, so we can conceal cards that, that away. We do get another boss. Yeah, and that's going to be the end of the game. So, pretty easy one at the end there. Getting that boss was really, really huge, but that's kind of the power of this deck. You're able to dig so deep into your deck that you're typically able to find whatever pieces it is that you're looking for without too much effort uh, and too much damage taken. So, yeah, Raging Bolt and Ogre Pond is super, super, super strong right now. Definitely highly recommend it if you haven't played it yet. I believe Raging Bolt was a free deck in the past. So, I think almost all the cards are available between that and Ogre Pond, like being able to play the two of them as the free decks, just accumulating those cards together. So, it's a pretty easy uh, deck to kind of like build and navigate. So, definitely give it a try if you haven't already. Definitely let me know what you think of the list and build, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I would greatly appreciate it. Be sure to join the community Discord in down in the description, and be sure to enter into our first ever community tournament on June 1st at 6.30 p.m. EST. And yeah, that's going to be it, guys, for the video. Definitely let me know what you want to see next on the channel, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace.